Dear friends, today I would like to speak about uh, the humidity in the air which affects the heat exchangers that runs on negative temperatures. I think you already recognize this picture. This is an air handling unit that recirculates the air but also takes a quantity of fresh air from outside. To be able to analyze a heat exchanger's capacity will always trend data. Working for a pharmaceutical industry, I quickly understood that the clean rooms must have the temperature within specific bandwidth. The same should happen with the relative humidity. Using the trended data, we create charts in which we do analysis for heat exchanger's performance, the air quality, not only through heat, heating and cooling and relative humidity perspective, but also we consider the filtration, the air which passes by the HEPA filters and so on. Now on this chart you will see how the ice which builds onto these heat exchangers affecting the heat exchanger performance. Look into the room in the right hand side you will see a high level of ice contamination and less performance while if you look to the dry room in the left hand side then you will see less ice building up onto the heat exchanger and because of that the heat exchanger it is far more efficient. Let's see how this is possible. Imagine you have two heat exchangers. They have equal power but one runs in a dry environment and the other one you, works in very moist environment. In the beginning the air is passing by equally through both heat exchangers but very soon you will observe the heat exchanger in the right hand side will build ice much faster because the air is far more humid than the air in the left hand side. So slowly you will observe that the air onto the right hand side will decrease its volume. Why this is happen? ice is building up onto the heat exchanger onto the right hand side and because of that you will see later on that we have to vary the speed of the motor to keep the volume constant you will see here the heat exchanger into the left hand side it's warmer but the air is cooler and the airflow is much better while the heater on the right hand side the cooler the heat exchanger is cooler the air is warmer and you have less airflow and that's a serious problem. Imagine this heat exchanger. The blue color shows you the free area where the air can pass by and the darker blue are the fins which cool the air. Now you can see the pipes which goes inside the heat exchanger. Now this heat exchanger it is subject to ice contamination as you will see on the top one top and on the bottom of the blue darker lines are some white lines they represent the ice they act like a blanket they restrict the airflow and cover the fins there's a little problem here ice is happening if you run heat exchanger on negative temperature so because of this you have to force the fan look on the right hand side to have the same air volume, you have to increase the pressure. You have 50 pascals, where in the left hand side you have only 4 pascals because you don't have a nice contamination. By increasing the pressure to keep a constant volume, you will put a big strain onto the fan motors. Now, as you'll see here, this is a fan driven by two motors. When people design these things, they were thinking about redundancy but this is only electrical redundancy because one of the bearing will be damaged to one of these motors the other motors will be stopped too will suffer we use a lot of equipment so we monitor the pressure and we have a variable speed drivers which will vary the speed of the motors to keep a constant volume increasing or decreasing the pressure when working for pharma, we have to make sure that the pressure cascade will be spot on. We cannot afford to make mistakes. This is all I had to say about uh, this. A very simple explanation. Now, coming back 
as you look to this air handling unit, this air handling unit shows you how the air circulates through. As you'll see, you take a big portion of fresh air and you recirculate a quantity of uh, air while exhausting as well a quantity of air. What comes in through the fresh air intake must go out through the exhaust. And inside you will see how the air is passing by the heat exchanger one by one. If you want to control the relative humidity and the temperature, you need multiple heat exchangers that will heat and cool against each other to obtain the results you would expect. You will have a uh, frost heat exchanger, you will have a, a pre-cooling heat exchanger, which is a fresh air conditioner, you will have also the main cooling coil, the heating coil and the humidifier. Also you will have a human machine interface, if you like you will have this HMI which will uh, translate the PLC to you and will translate you to the PLC. On this one you can see how the actuators work, the amount of glycol will uh, be pushed into the heat exchanger. It shows you the mistake, like in this case the actuator works but the spring is blocked so the valve will allow constant the glycol to pass by through a heat exchanger and then your temperature will be uh, uncontrolled. The air which goes into the clean room must be controlled as well because we have to have the appropriate cascade as you will see. Some rooms are marked with C, B, C. B is a superior area. It cannot intake the air from C. So this system is uh, wrong. It's subject to contamination. It is a wrong design. I have a reverse flow. So the air should not migrate from C to B. This is uh, against the farmer rules. So that B room must have a higher pressure than C. So watching this you'll observe this is a wrong um, condition. Now this condition is good. We have uh, the air migrating from B to C. So the cascade it is okay. And also we have from C to another C and this is acceptable. Just to make sure that people understand from the room B to C I have to have a minimum 15 Pascals. As technician we're waiting. One of the biggest mistakes um, when the A handling unit and these uh, rooms are designed people should not consider only the grade of the room so we provide the appropriate cascade we have to make sure what kind of temperature we have into these superior rooms because um, the dynamic flow which allows the air to come from a superior room to an inferior room like B to C um, can create a serious problem if we have a big uh, temperature differences and here you will see how the air should circulate into a building. Thank you very much for watching this Regardless of uh, what people believe or say, I just want to warn everybody that I observe on YouTube um, that uh, they remove the um, dislike and uh, dislike was a kind of uh, gauge for me, allow me to adjust myself that way so uh, I improve my English and I improve the way I do the videos. Um, I explain also that I'm not making money from the video, I'm not asking money, on, I'm not interested. But I'm a little bit upset uh, because YouTube remove the dislike because people have the right to express themselves. Now I have only here and there the likes but Without this, like, like we cannot balance the world. Just please watch my video and uh, if you have to say something or I make a mistake, uh, send me a message and um, I will read it because it's quite constructive for me. Um, I'm not teaching you how to do your job. I consider you my colleague no matter where you are on this planet and I want to share with you some of the griefs I have and probably if you're very experienced you will find uh, a way to explain to me how can I make uh, 
my job better. That's all I try to do with you. I just try to help and I'm putting on YouTube all my knowledge. Thank you. Bye.